Yo, what's going on, buddy? This is Don't Talk Sports. My name is Dylan. In today's video, what I'll be discussing is we're going to talk about the Orlando Magic versus the Cleveland Cavaliers series, where I'm a Cleveland Cavaliers fan, for those who do not know, and we were up 2-0. Now we're 2-2. We need to discuss this series big time. I came into the series thinking it was going to be a battle. It was going to be a tough one. We're going to have to fight through it. But then we went up 2-0. I saw the way the Magic were playing. I was like, oh, okay, so this is going to be one of these type series. But then we just had Game 3 and Game 4 in Orlando where the Cavaliers looked no better than the JV basketball, the high school basketball team. So what I wanted to do in this video is I kind of want to discuss the Cavaliers and discuss how the fuck do we get back to the way we were in Game 1 and Game 2 or at least even get better than that. I'm going to discuss every single game, Game 1, Game 2, Game 3, and Game 4, talk about where the Cavaliers did some good things and then where they did the bad things, obviously Game 3 and Game 4, and then how the Cavaliers can bounce back in game five especially getting back on track because the offense has was not there in the game three and game four game four it would seem like it was getting back but then the second half of the game oh my god we just let it down it, it, i don't even want to talk about it but like i said i'm gonna discuss kind of how the cavaliers can get back on track hopefully when a must win game five clutch up get the win in cleveland and then whether it be game six or game seven we can finish the series but as always if you're going to enjoy as always make sure you can drop a like on this video be very much appreciated we do so but without further ado let's get into it All right, starting off, let's talk about game one. We had game one, Magic lost 83, Cavs won 797, 83-97. It was a back and forth battle. The offense for the Magic just was not there. It seemed like in game one and game two versus game three and game four, it seemed like the offenses for both teams just flipped dynamically. It seemed like everything that could go right for the Cavs went right in game one and game two, and everything that could go wrong for the Cavs in game three and game four went wrong. And then vice versa for the Magic. Everything that could go wrong for the Magic in game one and game two went wrong. Everything that could go right, and when I mean go right, every single crazy shot went in and every single shot that you thought was going in was not going in let's take a look at the box score as you can see here uh looking at some of the magic players isaac he's a, he was not shooting a lot from three uh in this game he only got 10 points palo banchero he's got 24 points the wagner brothers they got theirs they the mo wagner I, wagner i think is how you say it he is just an antagonizer. He is just being a pest on the uh, Cavs offensive, offensive side of the ball. That man has the most punchable face in the world. Magic in game one, uh, Wendell Carter Jr., he was started. He came off the bench in that game. He didn't really do too much on the defensive side of the ball or even offensive side of the ball. He got a three points, only got the, the two rebounds total for the entire game. And when you look at the Cavaliers side of the ball, everything was working. Uh, Donovan Mitchell got his 30 points. Mobley now, and they were getting some buckets. Garland, he didn't do a crazy thing, but he did a crazy eye all in the game. But he got 14. He made a few threes. Did what he needed to do. The bench did not show up, though. Let's fast forward over to game two. Same kind of outcome, 86 and 96. Same thing with the Magic. They could not get the three ball going. 9 of 35. The first game, they were about 8 of 36. They could not get that three ball going. You look at the other guys. Isaac got three points. Paolo still got his. Wagner still got his. Uh, the other Wagner, he kind of got his, but he ended up fouling out in that game. When you look at the Cavs lineup, Mitchell got his. Uh, Garland still got about 15 points. Allen, Bobley both got theirs. Uh, Okoro, he ended up coming up in a big way, got 10 points, and Karis Lever got 8 points. Getting into game 3 and game 4, I mean, like, you can look at the scores, they're nothing to talk about. I'm gonna be honest, when I looked at game 3, I didn't even watch the game, I watched it about the first quarter, and then once the second quarter got to about like a 20 point lead, I was just like, fuck this, turn it off, plus the draft was on, so I was watching the draft. In this game, you could see everything was just going wrong, Donovan Mitchell, he could not get going, uh, Garland, 5 points, he couldn't get going. Allen, Mobley, they kind of got some rhythm going, but then it's like we ended up getting to the back end of our bench just to get see if anybody else could help out. Now, in game four, it looked like we had some momentum going. Halftime, we were up 60 to 51, and I was like, okay, can this team clutch up, get a win here? If it goes down to the end of the fourth quarter and it's like a last game shot, a last minute shot, so be it. Let's try to clutch up, win this game so we can go back home on game five and finish the series. Can we do that? Fuck no, because this team is a bunch of dingleheads who don't know how to finish a game. Mitchell had 18 points in the total game. You would say that's probably not that good. Well, let me point something out for you. He had 18 points in the first half. First half. And then he didn't get a single point in the second half. Garland getting 14 points. That's just not going to cut it. Allen had 21 points. That's what he, he... 21 points and the 9 rebounds. That's good for him. He could have got more rebounds, but I'm just saying. He did what he needed to do. Mobley, 14 points, about 9 rebounds. They did what they needed to do. Now, let's talk about where the Cavs need to get fucking better ASAP. Number one coaching coaching it needs to be a big thing and what i mean by coaching is we need to get the players out there that are gonna make some shots and not even just making shots but give guys better open looks because it seems like with this game we see donovan mitchell out there trying to do all these crazy things and he's trying to make his own shots and he's getting double team triple team and he can't make a shot and then whenever he passes the ball the open guy that he's giving the hit ball to is not making the shots or hell donovan mitchell is supposed to be our score and we can't even get him open looks we got other guys like max shoes when max shoes is get, taking a wide open look He's making that shot, but there's times where he's taking some contested shots and he's going for like one of six, two of nine for a game on three-point attempts, 
And it's like, yeah, he's not going to make the shots if he's always got a hand that's just all up in his face. A couple of other questions I have is, where's Ike as a core? Where's Sam Merrill? These guys are not on the court as much as we are used to. And then the other thing is, we do you ever hear this thing called the veteran presence, the guys that are supposed to be out there, that playoff experience, the guys that are supposed to give us the energy and know it all about how to win the playoffs? Where are these guys at? George Yang was like a, a rocket in a bottle or lightning in a bottle for the first two games. These games three and four, he's been nowhere to be seen. And it's not that he's not on the court. He's on the court. It's just he's not making any buckets. The most action I've seen out of him was a bank shot, a uh, two-point attempt in game th four and like the second quarter. After that, I haven't seen shit about him. Hell, like where's Marcus Morris? He He's very doable of getting you at least eight points in the game, playing maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then just riding the bench the rest of the way. That's all I need out of him. It seems like in game one and game two, we had the energy. We had the adrenaline pumping. We were, we were right there. We wanted to punch Orlando in the face. And then in game three and game four, Orlando was ready and they threw the counter jab. They, they threw the punches back and we are not responding. So like I said, Orlando, they are making the adjustments. They are making the adjustments. They made the switch of their centers in game three and game four to kind of adjust the way Jared Allen and Mobley are playing. Or Jared Allen adjusted well in game four, but it's just with Orlando, they could not miss a shot in game four. That, that I think is the big problem. Our defense was nowhere to be seen in game four. Orlando, no matter what we did to try and stop them, they could not miss. In games one and game two, we played some solid defense, but it was like Orlando was chucking up these three-point shots, or at least we were contesting them, and they were trying to put up even two-point attempts, and they could not make a shot to save their life. Whereas in game three and game four, you watch the way the game went. They made, and I'm not even exaggerating, they made everything. Like, I'm looking at the field goal percentage here for the Orlando Magic. They were a 55% field goal percentage make on game four. And they shot 46% from three in that game as well. So ultimately, like I said, how can we fix this and get ready for game five? Going into game five, it's going to be back in Cleveland. You got your home crowd on you. So you're going to have the, the adrenaline. Everything's going for you. Everything is on your side now. One of the big things everybody likes to say is role players play better when they're at home. And I think that's going to help out with us. A lot of times in the playoffs, your role players, they, they shoot better. The guys that are made just sit in the corner and shoot threes. And they will make their shots when they're in front of their home crowd. When they're on the road, they don't do as well. And I'm guessing we're banking on Orlando's players to come in back into Cleveland and to shoot from 20% from three going into the game five. And hopefully our guys, like we can get a core back on the court. He can start drilling some threes. Yang can start drilling some threes. And for the love of God, JB Bakerstaff, you talked about it in game one about, oh, Sam Merrow, he's like a weapon. He's like our special weapon that we can bring out anytime and go get some clutch shots. Well, why is he not getting any minutes until the game is pretty much over in these game three and game four like we saw him a little bit of action game one he barely got on the court in game two and in game three and game four we've barely seen him like hell in game three and game especially game three nobody could make a shot and i mean nobody could make a shot it was like just rim after brick after brick after brick get guys that can make shots get morris get merrill get guys that can hit a bucket for god's sakes but ultimately here's my final points like i said jb baker staff needs to make some adjustments he needs to get Get his head out of his ass. Stop trying to just do the same exact fucking thing that you've been doing for the since you were fucking born. You saw what Orlando did whenever they got their asses punched in the face for the first two games. They made adjustments. They just flipped everything on a 180 and just tried something different, and it worked. As you've seen for the game three and game four, it wasn't working. So let's, as the same thing, flip it on a 180, turn it upside his head, and let's change things up. The big keys to winning these next two games, especially in game five, if Mitchell can go out there, and I think he's the key, he's got to get his at least 30 points. Mobley and Allen got to get their 15 each. If Garland can get 15, right there, do the math. 30, 45, 60, 75 points already between them. If you can get your role players going, if you can get Levert, Levert is a big one. Get him to go out there and give, give you a few points. Can Struess hit you a couple threes? Can you get Morris and Merrill? Get them to hit a couple threes? Get a core to hit a three or two? It's like, I'm not saying everybody on the team needs to go out there and score 20 points each. It's just, can we get the role players? to each get a shot or two up and make it because you're in front of your home crowd if you can go out there and with all the momentum going for you and you can win this game the series is back in your control but if you lose this game you are down you were once up 2-0 you would now be down 3-2 and you are back in orlando's crib with a chance to possibly blow a series and if you lose a series i'm telling you right now donna mitchell is out of the town mitchell is walking he's not signing that contract J.B. Baker's staff is fired 100%. But if you win this game, you might have the momentum to where you can be able to make everybody understand, hey, we fucked up in those two games. That was a horrible out of showcasing from us as Cavaliers players. But we can go back in there in game six and we can steal this game and get this series wrapped up right here in game six. Now, will they do it? I'm not very confident, but I, I think they can get it done. But other than that, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Hopefully, you guys did go and enjoy today's video. If you did enjoy it, as always, make sure you go and drop a like on today's video. Be very much appreciated if you do so. If you wanted to watch the entirety of today's video, thank you very much. And like I said, if you disagree or agree with my opinions, do you think the Cavaliers are going to clutch up a game five? Not going to clutch up a game five? Do you trust them going forward? Do you not trust them going forward? 
Leave your complete opinion down in the comment section down below. I'll be more than welcome to talk about with you guys. If you're a fan of the content that I do poster and you want to go ahead and hit that big red subscribe button, feel free to do so and do not forget to hit that little notification bell to be notified the second I post. But without further ado, this has been Don't Talk Sports. Have a great day. Peace.